Hello YouTube, my name is Felix, also known as Wamka Bam, and I'm a professional mouse acceleration coach. Yes, that exists, and today I will be giving you an in-depth guide about Custom Curve Pro and Lite, about all the features, use cases, and hidden tricks that I have learned along my one-year professional coaching journey. To make sure you don't miss anything that might be game-changing for you, make sure to stick around until the end of the video, and without further ado, let's go! Just before we start, a little thing for all my humble light users out there. At the bottom of the screen, I will always have a text which either says Pro or Light, which indicates if a feature is Pro only or also available for the Light version. If you think about switching from Light to Pro, remember that you can use code WAM for $5 off your purchase. And yeah, let's, let's hop into the video now. All right, so I'm gonna assume that you have basically no experience at all, and I'm gonna make this as in-depth as I can. First off, you're gonna see a curve. The curve that you will see when you load up Custom Curve for the very first time is if I just do apply default, it's gonna be this curve, right? It's gonna be a little bit weird. You're gonna also see a green, in your case, probably yellow thing moving around when you move your mouse. And what does, what does that mean exactly? So let's get to the Y and X axis of the program, right? Because that's basically the foundation of the program and how it works. So the Y axis is called sensitivity, as <laughs> you might be able to read, I hope. And it starts at 0 0.5. So how you can think about the sensitivity axis is like a multiplier in front of your DPI. So if I move my mouse very, very slowly, it's gonna only be here, right? That's also the mouse ohmmeter indicator, how fast you move your mouse, but we'll come to that in a bit. That means that your DPI is multiplied by 0 0.5. So if you're playing on 800 DPI, for that very, very slow movement, it's gonna be like 400 DPI. If you play with 1600 DPI, for that very, very slow movement, it's gonna feel like 800 DPI, right? And if you manipulate your curve further and further, that is gonna change as well, right? So if you reach this point, your curve is gonna be multiplied what, by 1.75, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna try to do the math, so, but it's gonna be roughly around 1400 if you're an 800 DPI and so on and so forth. I hope you understand. So let's jump back to this curve. Now let's get to the x-axis of the program, which is quite necessary to understand as well. So basically, dots per millisecond is what it says. It's, it might be familiar because you're familiar with dots per inch, which is your DPI, right? But what is dots per millisecond? That is basically the change rate of your DPI, which essentially means how fast you move your mouse. So if I move it very, very slowly, it's not, like the muscle meter, which is the color thing, which is moving along or proportionally to how fast you move your mouse, is not gonna be very, very far off, right? But if I really move my mouse faster, when I zoom out, you're gonna see even better it's gonna be a lot, a lot further. So this basically just indicates how fast I move my mouse. And with these two axes, we can manipulate and understand a curve we're trying to build. Now that we have a basic understanding on how a curve works, and just before we get into how to actually change a curve, let's look at the different buttons we have on the main interface, right? So we can see two locks right here, which can only be locked one at a time, right? So if I lock this one, then the other one can stay unlocked. But if I lock this one instead, the other one will unlock. Right? And this only means that you can drag and drop a point from one side to the other when I lock it on the x-axis, which makes sense. And if I lock it on the y-axis, you can only drag it up or down, which I can't do here because there's no room since this point exists. But if I try it here, I can only go up and down and not left to right. Let's make this curve jump back. And there's two or four more buttons that are very mundane as well, but we'll quickly talk about them that you can shift your curve on either axis with, right? So with the plus and minus on the Y axis, you can just shift the entire curve up or down. So you just click it and it shifts the curve by a certain amount. And then the same works for the axis, axis as well. But you will notice that with shifting it on the X axis, this point will move because obviously it can't really move because it has to have a beginning. Right, so now comes the more that's a useful stuff and more in-depth stuff already, right? So we have this little thing, which is a pro-only feature. And in my opinion, one of the better pro-only features because this basically just lets you close custom curve entirely and it will still work, right? Which is very, very useful to get that extra few frames out of your computer while playing. Now that custom curve is back open, let's just talk about how you can quickly manipulate and change a curve. So you have a few points, we can just drag and drop them to manipulate a curve, which is very easy. You can also right click and add a point or add an edge point. Edge point simply is put that they have an edge instead of a curve, right? So if I instead put a normal point, they won't have that edgy look, if that makes sense. 
And that's basically already it on how to change your curve, right? You, you just drag and drop. Uh, alternatively, you can also put in specific values. So for example, I could put 15, not 156. Oh my God. And for example, on one, and then I have the point exactly where I want it to have, right? And yeah, that's basically it on how to tangent curve. Now that we have our hypothetical curve, let's just see how we can actually save that curve, right? Because this is very important as maybe you are still playing around and trying to find your curve. You might do an edit that you don't really like, right? And if you do it and press apply and you don't quite know how to go back yet, which I'll explain soon, but sometimes you just don't know, you can't figure it out, or you have the light version, it's very, very important to save your curve, right? So to do that, it's very straightforward. You just hit file, save, and then create a name, like wham, test curve, right? And then you press enter, and then it's saved. So if, if I just fuck this curve up in a weird way, which I don't really enjoy playing, right? And I press apply, and I don't know how to go back yet. I'll just go on load instead of save, go to my curve, double click it, press enter, whatever your preference is, and then we're back on that curve. Very, very easy. By the way, if you're interested in trying out different curves from our very diverse mouse acceleration community on our Discord server with over 35,000 members, feel free to join it at discord.gg forward slash wham, where we have hundreds of curves for you to pick and choose from. I personally have also posted my curves there, which I pinned in the curves channel, which you can find here. And just as a quick plug for myself, if you are interested in having a curve built just for you, and your playstyle, feel free to head over to wamkpm.com where I offer that as a service to build you your own perfect curve with 100% satisfaction guarantee. I've had over 300 very, very happy clients, which if you're on my Discord server, you can feel free to head over to the client feedback tab and just read through all the reviews I've had over the year. And yeah, if you're interested, head to my website, wamkpm.com. You can save 10% off with the code YouTube. And yeah, that's it. Okay, now that we're back to custom curve, there's one feature that we haven't discussed yet within the main interface, which is this small box here. You can change it so it uh, says horizontal or vertical axis, but I think it's a better idea to discuss it when we get to the advanced tab, because there's one feature that intertwines with this, so it'll make it a little bit easier to understand. Without further ado, let's get back to the file tab, where we've talked about loading and saving a curve, which I think is very, very easy to understand. Now we have apply settings at lock on. This is just a feature that makes custom curve open automatically if you start your PC, right? So for example, me, I always have my curves starting at 0 0.5 because I play on 1600 DPI for the decreased input lag, but I don't like having 1600 DPI on my desktop because for me personally, it's too, too fast. Also use like a very, very small fingertip mouse. So it just makes sense for me to have this feature enabled because I use custom curve on my desktop as well, since it starts at 0 0.5 and makes 1600 DPI feel like 800. Run without process is basically persistent settings pinned. So running without process will make it so certain other features will be deactivated as well if you run custom curve by closing it, right? So if you have a very low NPC, this will get you that extra few frames, but usually in like 80, 90% of builds, and there's no, no real necessity of activating this feature. I personally haven't had it activated ever, but that's entirely up to you. I think it's preference. If you notice a difference, go ahead and uh, activate the program, uh, sorry, the, the feature. I'll have a list of the features that it deactivates. So if you are using one of these features, do not activate this because this will impact the feel of your curve. I've just realized that the custom curve program is slightly underneath my webcam, so don't mind if I just drag it here. Uh, sorry about that. I hope it didn't cause too much of an inconvenience. So for the file tab, we're almost through. Uh, exit, surprise, exits the program. No special thing there. We just have it back here. Let me make sure to drag it down so you can actually see what's going on. Now let's talk about the edit tab, right? So we have two things here, which I've kind of teased already where when you change your curve and you fuck it up a little bit, you want to go back to the other one, but you haven't saved it, what can you do, right? So undo basically undoes what you've done and redo redoes what you have done. I think that makes sense because the words are very literally, but let's just make an example out of it, okay? Okay, let's go to our hypothetical curve and edit it in a way that we hypothetically wouldn't really enjoy using it, right? So we press apply and we don't really have access to the old curve anymore because we hypothetically don't have it saved. 
what can we do now to restore the curve that we just had? So we would go to edit and press undo because we want to undo the process that we have done, right? So when we press undo, there's a line, but it's it's not quite right yet, right? And can we can we do this manually? It's it seems hard and it doesn't seem perfect. So what we can do instead is when we have this, we press M. And M, ironically, or not ironically, but in a nice way, is another feature here, which is match active curve. So when you have a curve that is not applied yet, and you want to go let, uh, make it go back to the curve that we had before, you just go here and go to match active curve and press it, or alternatively use a shortcut and use M. Now quickly for redo, it just redoes what you have done and you can now press M again to go back to the curve that you had. And to go back again, you press undo and then you press M again. I think that's very, very self-explanatory now. Okay, now let's talk about the small error at the end, which we will need for the next feature. It's called the tail and let's just see what happens when we press this, right? In this curve, it doesn't really do anything. So let's edit it quickly so it actually does something and we can see what the feature intends to do. When we press apply and now go back to align tail, it will have the same slope as the last point of the curve. Why is this a feature? I don't really know. You can use T as a shortcut, but me personally, I would always recommend that you have the tail flat because now I'm gonna explain to you what it does and it's gonna make sense. Also the developer even recommends doing it flat or keeping it flat because when you look at it mathematically, the curve is a graph, correct? So it goes from here and it ends here, but a function can't really end at a certain point because what do you do after that? If you move your mouse fast enough and it goes beyond the last point, what should the mouse be expected to do, right? Does it just stop? Does it go faster? Does it go slower? And that's what the tail is for because this kind of indicates how your curve is gonna go into infinity, right? So if I exceed the last point of the curve, this tail will say, okay, keep the acceleration flat. There's no acceleration anymore, but we just keep it at one constantly. If I put point it upwards, it's gonna com continue increasing forever. If I move my mouse as fast as I can, it's still gonna accelerate. And if I do it with a negative slope, which I can't do yet because we're gonna come to the feature soon, it will decelerate forever. I hope that makes sense. And also a quick side note, the length of the arrow does not matter. It just matters what slope it looks into. Now we are pretty much finishing up the edit section already because these two features are very, very small and minute. So let's talk about rescale view. Rescaling the view pretty much does exactly what it says. If you zoom somewhere and want to have the curve nicely placed and presented as it was when you load up the program at the start, you just press on this and it will do exactly that. Alternatively, you can press the key R, which will do exactly the same as you can see here. About this feature we've already talked, it's when you added a curve and you don't press apply yet, you can press M or alternatively to go to match active curve to make it jump back to where it was before. Applying the defaults does exactly what it does. It applies all the default settings that we've had before, uses at your own risk, but to be honest, all the things that you would change that are gonna be lost when you apply the default settings are also saved when you save a curve. So when you load up a curve after applying the default settings, it doesn't really matter. So no worries at all. Now we're getting to the more interesting stuff. Within the option channel, there is a feature called negative acceleration, which we can allow by pressing this. But what does it mean exactly? So if we have it deactivated, you can see that we can't really drag one point below the next one, right? But if we do activate it, this just becomes possible. But from a logical standpoint, it doesn't really make sense to have negative acceleration unless you actually want to circumnavigate over flicking or if you have a physical condition like my good bro Mr. Toes that can help kind of deviate or let's say make up for the the shaking but in all other cases it's not really something you would use custom curve for because you actually want to do an acceleration not a deceleration correct but what I found to be a very very interesting use case is to build plateaus so with this you can do something like this we'll need to add a point here and like this, we can build something which has no acceleration in between, but builds up acceleration before and after. So if I hit apply and zoom in here, you can see there's no acceleration there. It's like a plateau. So we could we could imagine that, for example, for this, that would be like the small flicks, the angle swapping. 
and within that there's no acceleration it's going to be constant which is very nice and beyond that for 180s for sw uh, f flicking around to dodge flash and so all that good stuff it picks up again so in my opinion this can be a very nice feature i usually always have it activated just to have a bit more freedom while editing the curve and yeah that's in my opinion a very very nice feature to to use the next few features within options are very very easy to understand bypass confirm changes does exactly what it says if you press apply usually that would come up a window where you have to press ok or cancel to apply or not apply changes if you have this activated this window won't show anymore for me since i added quite a lot of curves i think by now i've edited over 2000 or something because a lot of clients like tend to have some revisions to actually dial in that perfect curve it gets annoying after a little while so i personally have this activated show values over hover shows the values over each point if you deactivate it, it uh, this feature <laughs> obviously it's not going to show the values and zoom to location is a quite interesting feature but <laughs> it's so unnecessary in my opinion so if you have it activated and you use a scroll wheel to zoom you just zoom into your cursor and if you at the same time press control you're going to zoom into the uh, coordinate zero zero and if you activate this or sorry deactivate this feature it's just going to switch that around right so if i now zoom only with my scroll wheel i'm going to zoom into zero zero and if i zoom with control and my scroll wheel i'm going to zoom into my cursor once again i just prefer personally to have this activated because i think it's more natural to use just your cursor to zoom in uh, sorry just your scroll wheel to zoom into your cursor but that's definitely enough talk about zooming into something now let's talk about the display settings you can change the rate and smoothness of your graph and the muscle meter which basically just makes a visual difference of how nice it looks i personally can't even really tell a difference but the developer told me that it does a difference so i'll uh, quote that for this uh, we also have text guiding if you decrease this uh, to up to 25 the text will go bigger if you increase it up to 250 the text will go smaller be aware though the changes are pretty pretty insane i'll just put it to 25 for you to see how it actually looks like when you put it to 25 uh, it is quite nuts um so be aware if you use this um the changes are quite as extreme personally i i think 125 is a nice option to have as well but since I oftentimes have people that watch me, I can't really have the text much smaller because Discord screen uh, streams and such all, always lower the quality, which will make it hard to read. So personally, I just keep it at 100 all the time. Now let's talk about dots per update, which is the next feature in the options tab. If we activate this, you will realize that your x-axis will switch from dots per milliseconds to dots per update. But what does this mean exactly? I'm in close contact with a custom curve developer and I've asked him that specific question more than a year ago. And this is what he told me. Normally, if you have a usual curve with dots per millisecond, this is how your curve will look like. And switching it to dots per update will make it look like this. Basically, dots per update means that the points get reduced to every single digit of the millisecond. So everything between that, all the rational numbers are going to get deleted in a way. So there's no information transferred. As you can see between those numbers, so between zero and one, there is no information. The information, so the rate of change occurs at one, at two, at three, at four, and so on and so forth. So this basically creates like a step or like, a, yeah, a step pattern, which is a very interesting <laughs> way to build a curve. Personally, I don't ever use this. Um, and usually it's not really recommended for anyone besides people that experience bad spiking with bluetooth or wireless mice which means that if you move your mouse and then at some point it lags and then it completely spikes into a very very fast speed which you humanly can't really achieve you can realize that through the history graph where the maximum velocity would be for example 3000 dots per milliseconds which is just very high the developer told me that this is really only useful for people that have this bad spiking and should be avoided if possible you know and if you do have that big spiking make sure that you're re uh, using a reasonably high dpi so for example 1600 and above and not too high polling rate which would be at around a thousand hertz now we're almost finished with the options tab let's just quickly deactivate the dots per update because realistically you're not going to need it in the advanced options we have quite a few things first up are the metrics 
So we have three metrics, Euclidean, taxi cab, and independent. But what is the metric for? Well, the metric indicates how Custom Curve will use your mouse velocity as input. So with Euclidean, it's gonna calculate the input with x squared plus y squared. With taxi cab, it's gonna use it as x plus y. And with independent, it's gonna call it, it's gonna use it independently. But how does independent specifically work? Well, maybe you're familiar with the term angle snapping from Roxo. Angle snapping basically means that it locks your horizontal movement in place, so you don't have that slight vertical deviation, which can be nice for flicking when you have good cross-up placement. But in my opinion, it actually limits the skill ceiling for those very small micro adjustments, which can go wherever. They can be perfectly vertical or horizontal, which angle snapping is fine for, but if they have a different degree than just 90 or zero, for example, 45 or 30 or whatever, it actually limits that possibility and hence also limits your skill ceiling. So independence is similar to angle snapping, but less intrusive where that's actually still possible, but with also a straighter line. So this is a rather, a, well, a better option than using angle snapping in Roxa. And I've asked the developer as well, and he recommended either using Euclidean or an or the independence factor at 100. Let's go to the next feature. This feature is called the bias mode. The bias mode has an emphasis between one and three. But what this does, let's just backtrack for a second. Because if you remember, in the beginning, we had a feature that we skipped for this feature specifically, because they're intertwined. And actually, the bias feature does not have any impact if the other feature is not activated. But what feature am I talking about? Let's just quickly go back to the main interface because there is this little thing here, which right now says both axes. But if I put it into the middle, it says horizontal axis. And if I put it to the right, it says vertical axis. But what happens if I activate this? If you made it this far into the video and have learned something or are hopefully even enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like or even subscribing since quite a lot of work went into preparation for this video since I was in very close contact with the developer asking a lot of a lot of questions for you guys so I could make the best guide possible. Anyways, now let's get back to the guide. Thank you. If I now edit the curve with the starter put on the vertical axis and just create another curve and apply it, this basically means that I have a different curve for my vertical movements instead of the horizontal movements, right? So I just edited the curve for my vertical movements. But what happens if I do something in between? So my movements are not perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, like the issue is with angle snapping. That basically means that within that range of not perfectly vertical and not perfectly horizontal, the curves will mix, right? So there's theoretically an infinite amount of different curves within that range that would mix. So personally, me, I don't use this. I don't use it for clients because there's another feature that kind of has the pros of this feature, but not the cons of the different infinite amounts of curves that can occur. But now let's talk about the bias mode. Let's go back to the options in the advanced tab and then go to the bias mode. Now it's gonna get a little bit more complicated, so bear with me. The developer was nice enough to give us access to a graphical calculator, which visualizes what the emphasis actually does. To understand this graphical calculator, we have four different metrics that I'm gonna go over quickly. So first we have the input angle. Input angle just basically means how you move your mouse in game, right? So if you look straight up, it's gonna be 90 degrees. If you look straight to the right or left, so horizontally, it's gonna be zero degrees. And if you look a perfect mi mixture between those two, it's gonna be 45 degrees. I think that's very understandable. Then we have the horizontal sense, which is one, and the vertical sense, which is two. This basically means that we have two different curves for our, our vertic vertical sense and our horizontal sense, which in custom curve would look like this. So we have the two for the vertical and the one for the horizontal. Then we have the emphasis. The emphasis is exactly the feature that we are talking about, right? So this is locked at two right now. So if I activate this and drag it to one, this would look like this and to two and to three it would look like this to understand what the bias now actually does let's just drag it to one because then it becomes visually apparent so if we have an input angle of 45 degrees our sense will be 1.5 which is the perfect middle between two and one right and if we have an input angle of let's put it to two oh let's put it to zero we'll have a sense of one and if we put it to 90 we'll have a sense of two I think that makes sense so far. Now let's shift the emphasis towards three. As you can see, the graphs are changing. This basically means that it has a more weighted bias towards either the vertical or the horizontal curve, 
as soon as you get closer to it. That we can kind of compare when you take the input angle and let's put it to 10 degrees and look what we have now. So let's just ignore the one. Let's look at the past one decimal. So we're at zero, zero, 005. Let's just call it it's five out of 100, right? With the emphasis of three being at an input angle of around 10 would have zero, zero, 005, which is, a, is five in this case. And if we have an emphasis of one, that would be over 100, right? So it's a lot less weighted towards the one. Same thing goes with the two for the horizontal, right? If we go to 80 degrees and we put the emphasis on one, it's gonna be roughly at 88, right? But now if we put the emphasis back to three, it's gonna almost be at two entirely, correct? So it's you can think of it as a weighted bias for those different curves. And then again, if you don't have different curves, for the horizontal or vertical, this bias option is not gonna do anything. It's not gonna matter for your settings at all. Now let's close it and get to the next feature. The next feature is called rotation. All the old raw Excel folk that have switched to custom curve are probably already familiar with this term. This basically means that all the input that you do, so if you aim, if you flick, or you do whatever you wanna do in game, that will be switched or rotated by a certain amount of degrees. Okay, now I've prepared a very professional drawing for you guys so you can actually visually see what I mean and hopefully better understand what I'm saying. So right now we have the unit circle, which is this very nice thing right here, which basically means that in this direction, the degrees are positive and in this direction, the degrees are negative, which basically means that, for example, if you do decide or try to aim horizontally, but your aim is kind of sluggish and goes downwards, you can shift the entire aiming, I would say, into this direction, which would be positive degrees. Let's say this would be five degrees. Let's see if I can actually write this down. Perfect. And the entire input that you do is going to be shifted around five degrees. Usually, if people have this issue, they already know it and they've looked for a solution for it. So if you're not familiar with the term yet, there is no really reason to get into it. That's what I always say. The people that actually are affected by this issue already know the solution, already have the solution, and the people that don't, don't. The last feature of the advanced tab is called VSM, otherwise known as the Vertical Sense Modifier. This is basically the feature I was talking about with the horizontal versus vertical curves, which I think have more cons than pros. But the pros would be that, for example, if you have a rather low setting, which physically you have more space to move left to right with your arm than up and down, you would have to increase your curve upwards so you can actually reach higher targets. That would be good for it. But then again, all the cons outweigh that. But with this vertical sense modifier, you just put a very, very easy to understand multiplier in front of your vertical movements. So for example, on my curves, which are very, very low end, I would, for example, put 1.1 or 1.15 before, so my vertical movements are 10 to 15% quicker, which can help me kind of circumnavigate my ver otherwise really, really low settings. Now let's quit the advanced tab and go over to the tools section. The first feature in tools is devices. This lists the number of mice that you have or had connected to your PC, which you can add exclusions to on which custom curve won't be applied. So for example, if I have a work mouse, which I would only use for more work, for example, an ergonomic mouse with a lot of buttons, which I usually wouldn't use for gaming, I can automatically add that, which means that custom curve will not be applied to that mouse, but to my gaming mouse. Now, if you're wondering why this has like a weird ID and isn't really named after your mouse and you wanna find out what ID your mouse has without actually doing this adding and removing by trial and error, you can simply go to device manager go to the mouse you're looking for onto properties then events and then right here that's the number you're looking for i can double check this pid 1310 pid 1310 and then that's going to be it now let's quit devices and head to the next feature of tools this is dpi and scaling earlier in the video i explained how i used to play on 800 dpi but then switching to custom curve i saw the opportunity to go to 1600 dpi which I think is the better option because you have less input lag, but I wanted to make my 800 dpi curve feel exactly the same as 1600 dpi, which means that it 
basically has no difference when I move my mouse. So on the desktop, it feels the same. I can run the same in-game sensitivity and that's how you achieve it with this. You input your old DPI and your new DPI and it will work the magic of custom curve and scale the curve accordingly. Now for the sense and DPMS, those are just very simple factors you would put in to scale your curve. For example, if I want to double my curve in the Y axis, I would put two and then I would double my curve in the Y axis. If I halfen it, it will go back to where it was. Same thing for the DPMS value. So for the Y axis, if I double it, it will double. And if I halfen it, it will half. Now to the offset, the offset is basically the beginning of the curve without any acceleration. In this instance, the curve doesn't have it. Um, if you've watched the video where I show you how to find your own settings, you know that it's actually pretty beneficial to have an offset because you actually want to have no acceleration for the micro movements, but then as your movements and uh, speed picks up, you want to have that acceleration. But in this curve, since it's just like a proof of concept curve, we don't have it yet. So let's add this. For example, I would put five and the entire curve will shift to the right with an offset of five where there's no acceleration. Now, the same thing can be applied to the other direction. So if I put minus five, it's gonna go back to where it was. Now let's head on to the next feature of tools, which will be the history setting, which in my opinion is one of the most important and best features of Custom Curve Pro. I use this for my clients to find their curves. I've used it in the guide to find curves. I'm not gonna go in depth on how to do that exactly, but I'm gonna roughly show you what it does. And then if you're interested in how I actually use it to find curves, you can go ahead and watch that video. So first, let me just do an example. So when you press play or record, the history graph will record your mouse movements, more specifically your mouse speed. So if I flick rather fast, it's gonna show those spikes. If I do like smaller movements, it's gonna show that and everything in between. Now, if I press pause, it's going to hold off and it's not going to continue anymore, obviously. And then we already have some readings. So it's going to be the average, which is quite obvious, the average, the maximum. Uh, all these values are in the dots per millisecond. So basically the speed. And yeah, you can also, instead of pressing this to make the history graph start, press the record button, which is actually going to save each individual DPMS reading as a text file in a new line, which then you can put into Excel to have more advanced insights. Me personally, I've not played around with that much, but if you are one of the very nerdy nerds that can take advantage of that, you are welcome to do so. Now there's two features that very obviously state what they do here. Um, so if you want to delay the start by a maximum of 60 seconds, you can put in the second number here. And if you want to put in a very specific number of minutes you want to record your history graph for with a maximum of 60 minutes, you can also put that down here. Now, I know a lot of you guys will be curious about this little feature here, which can apply recommended settings, but I have to disappoint you. This is not an, a new big AI feature that's going to magically find your curve. That's what I am for, plug to wemkaban.com. But if you actually do press apply, this is basically just going to take the maximum readings, the average readings, and kind of scale the first preset, which is the default curve we saw in the beginning along the DPM mass axis. So either gonna make it longer or shorter to match your maximum movements. And so it's not, nothing really special, nothing I would recommend. I would just recommend using this to build your own curve and not press apply at all. That's pretty much all for the history graph for now. Again, if you want a more detailed version, you can head on to the other video where I explain how to find your own curve. But now let's head out of this and go to the profiles. So with the profiles, you can bind different curves to specific keybinds, which you can either hold or toggle. In my opinion, this can be very fun. For example, if you wanna have a spin bot curve and a normal curves, which you can just quickly switch to when you're diffusing the spike, or for example, when you're an opper, you can have a, a curve for your rifling and one for your opping. For example, when you <laughs> wanna show off with your op and you wanna have such an immensely high curve that you can uh, do a 360 while being double scoped, that's also possible with this, but obviously that would be very unpractical when you're rifling and you just wanna flick and then you do like 3,000 360s. And that's what this, uh, for example, for or specifically for FPS can be very useful for. Now let's close this as well and go to the last feature of the tools, sensitivity toggle. Now within this feature, you can either hold or toggle a mouse button or a keybind to put a certain horizontal or vertical factor in front of your horizontal or vertical movements. So one use case I could think of would be to replicate angle snapping, but a, in a like crazy way. So for example, if I put like a key for D, 
and say hold. So every time I press D and I put my vertical multiplier to zero, I would have perfect horizontal movement since my mouse can't even go up or down. That could be fun if you actually want to flick someone and you have good crosshair placement. But other than that, I don't see much of a use case for this. That's already it for the tool section of custom curve. Now we go to the presets. Presets are basically just a few different curves and curve styles that you can try out. But then again, I highly encourage you to join our Discord to try out some curves from our big community. And if you're interested, you could also, of course, come to me at webcommand.com if you're interested in me building you a curve. Personally, I have not found one preset that actually works quite well for me. There's also the developer curves if you're interested in those and the bypass actually bypasses acceleration itself it just it's just a flat line so if you're interested for for example some readings with a history graph where you don't actually play with any acceleration i want to compare those two that's a feature that you could use for that you can also change the color of the main interface of custom curve as you probably realize mine is green and not yellow as the default is you can do that by going to themes and then to colors and then choosing whatever color you please you can also have different colors for your horizontal or vertical curves if you do run different curves those you can change by going to custom and then changing those. Now let's come to the last part of custom curve, the help section. So the about just tells you what version you're on. The user manual is actually quite interesting for the more interested people of you, which I'm assuming you are since you're actually watching the entire video. And here you can find a lot of keybinds, a lot of shortcuts for just quickly editing a curve, but also pretty much every feature I've dug into in detail is also explained here shortly. So if you actually want to have a rephrasing or short rephrasing, you can always head to the user manual and get it from here. Now, having closed the user manual, there's actually not much left. So within the help section, there's still the web guide, which is just one small video about how to get started with custom curve but assuming you've actually watched the video as you are listening to me now i don't think you have to actually go there because we have the in-depth guide here but there's a quick start guide of the official custom curve channel if you are interested other than that uh, we also have the license key so if you want to see the license key that you're using and if you want to uninstall the driver you can also do that through here i hope custom curve treats you well if it doesn't, I'm very sorry. Um, please give it a shot. Please try to find settings. Please try to give it a genuine effort. And then I'm very sure that you will see positive impacts. Even if you don't plan on buying a curve from me, you can always head to the client reviews and really see what good settings can do to people. In any case, I really thank you for watching the video. I highly encourage you that if you learned something or found it useful or enjoyed watching that you would like and subscribe. It would really, really help me out a lot. Then again, if you're planning on upgrading to Pro, you can always use code WAM for $5 off your purchase. And you can use the code YouTube for 10% off your purchase on my website. Thank you so much, and I'll see you once again.